For the last little while, I've been using Foundry Tabletop instead of Roll20. Uh, the reason being is they have really fantastic support for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And as I got fatigued with 5th Edition, I trans transitioned to Pathfinder 2nd and moved over to Foundry as well because I heard a lot of good things. It was a little bit of a challenge to get into compared to Roll20, just because I was so used to that. Um, so I wanted to kind of do another quick crash course on Foundry to hopefully help some other people get into it a bit easier than how I did. Hopefully this will be another comprehensive look at that. So the first thing you have to do is it you have to buy it. It's not free. I believe it is 50, I think this is 50 US dollars still, so it is a bit of a cost up front but what you can do is chip in with people and that's what i did is i chipped in with some friends and then we just you're allowed to share the key as long as you're not like selling it off if you're just sharing it for your own personal use it's totally fine and so that's what we did so it wasn't as bad um but it does cost some money up front um so the first thing you'll have to worry about when you actually want to host the game is downloading it for the first part so you need to make sure you're signed in on your account and uh, where is it it doesn't show up when you're not signed in so let me do that quickly and we'll see if that changes okay so I'm logged in now and it does say download software at the bottom so you download the software and you have it once you have it you will do have to do some port forwarding which essentially allows other people to pass through your personal like home internet to kind of access a server that you're hosting on your own computer instead of using their own server system that they would have that like roll 20 has or Albert rodeo for example so it's a little bit complicated this page will explain it they do explain it very well um, it is a bit intimidating at first but once you do it, it's not so bad. And once it's done, it's done. You won't have to do it ever again, as far as I understand. So this will look different for each router. Essentially what you need to do is you need to figure out your router model. And then in your address bar, you type in a code like 192.168, something, something, something. And it will bring you to that a page that looks like this. And then most of the time, there's a way that you can um, access this and change your settings so that the port can go through. It's 30,000. I won't show you because I can't. It would expose my IP address and all that stuff. But if you follow this website through Foundry, it does explain it very well. Um, and you will get it done. And once it's done, it's done. So I'll just show you kind of what it looks like in Foundry itself um, so that it is set up properly. So once you've installed Foundry um, and you have to run it as an administrator for whatever reason uh, and in your application configuration settings the port will be here and once you have that through that should allow all of your friends to access your games. So now that we're actually in the software there's a few things you'll have to do before you get going. So firstly is game system. So Foundry works with multiple game systems, just like most other tabletops do, and you need to install it. So they have a lot that are already here, uh, powered by the Apocalypse, Call of Cthulhu, and you simply just have to install them. Um, so let's see what happens if I install Call of Cthulhu 7th. So boom, it's installed. There you go. So now the game, now Foundry has access to all the rules and everything that you need to play that game. And so when you go to Game Worlds, which is kind of like your different campaigns or sessions and stuff, you would create the world. And with that, you can add an image, you can uh, put a page theme, you can set next session time, describe the world. Um, and then this is where you would select the game system. So I'll just do a test. Um, Cthulhu World. Did I spell it wrong? I don't know. Create the world. So then there you have it. And when you click it, it would launch it. But I'm not going to launch that one. I'm going to delete this one. Uh, it gives you a code, which is nice, so that you don't accidentally delete your whole campaign. <coughs> and so I'll do that. 
So the next thing is uh, add-on modules, which are things that you add into your game and install in the world that changes it in certain ways. So yes, there's a lot here. Um, I kind of just, as I went, looked for things that would make my game easier or simpler or nicer. Uh, a lot of the ones for Pathfinder, you can just type in PF2E when you go to install them and it'll find a lot of good ones. So to install them, you click install module and then this is where you would find them once that you want. Uh, so I'll just type in PF2E in the search and then it should give me a bunch of useful modules for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I have several installed. Um, some of them are user experiences, some of them are interactive token tip, tooltip things. Uh, some of them are like class specific, like exploit vulnerability. And for the most part, they are uh, like this one, I have reaction checker. So it'll like give a prompt in the chat when a reaction can be uh, can be used, which is really nice. A lot of it is very much quality of life changes. You don't necessarily need them, but when you actually load in, you'll notice that there are a lot of fe features that feel like they're missing. Because when I came from Roll20, I was like, where's the ruler? Um, where's this? Where's that? I was looking for a lot of stuff. And they're not there by default. You just have to add them in. And so I did. So once you have it installed, it's very easy to keep them all updated. I'm not... Some of them fall out of date like perfect vision is not working and i'm not proficient enough to deal with that um, but for the most part it's pretty straightforward same with game systems i just hit update all it updates the pathfinder whenever there's an update um, and that happens so i'll hop into mine that i've been running for the last little while and kind of give you a quick tour of how things will work so the first thing that happens is it will bring you into your little world area um I still haven't updated the next session. Oh well. Uh, you just need to click Game Master and that's like your default for getting in. To change things around. Um, I'm just going to click. So usually what you'll land in is uh, the Foundry Virtual Tabletop page and that's just the default splat screen that you'll need. So this is a scene and a scene is where all of your stuff takes place. That's just think of it like a page from Roll20. And those are accessed here with this little foldable thing. Uh, I guess it looks like a GM screen, trifold, I'm not sure. But that's where your scenes are located. And whenever you create a new scene, you have to give it a name. So uh, test scene. And then it will give you a prompt like this. And this is where you can change all the settings within it. So you'd find a background image to put there. Uh, I don't know if I have any that would fit right off the bat. Um, let's just do the Swamp Road again. So you pick an image um, that has to be in a special folder and I'll show you how to find that soon. Once you find the, fo the image that you want to put on, just hit save um, and it should make it for you. Now you can access it. So the first thing I'll show is the grid because the grid is always the biggest <laughs> issue I find with a lot of map stuff. Um, they make it relatively easy. Sometimes I've only had it happen once where they don't line up. So to line up the grid, you want to right click your little scene in the top, click on configure, and then click on grid. Uh, you click this little tool and it'll allow you to configure it. So you just move this to the side. Uh, use the shift mouse wheel or shift up arrow down arrow to adjust the background image size. So now all you do is you hold shift and scroll um, and you just do that until the grid lines up properly. And you might have to do it for a little bit. I think I went too far. Uh, and then how do you move it around? Alt, up, and down. I think alt, up, and down is like bigger changes. I'm having trouble with this one for some reason. Yeah, so alt is like big changes and then uh, shift is like smaller ones. So I think right... Why am I having... I'm, I think this one's just not working. Hmm. Sometimes they, they go a bit silly. But I have had good results in the past. Hmm. 
Maybe I went the opposite direction. Okay, there we go. So I just went the wrong way. So I scroll it smaller, and now it's all lined up. You hit save. Yes, it just means that whatever objects are there are being moved around, and then it's done. So now your grid is lined up. Um, there's a few other settings you can mess with, but that's the main thing. Grid done. Okay. Next, you need some player characters and tokens and things like that. So that is in the actors tab. So actors are any tokens or creatures or player characters that you have. Uh, when you create an actor, you can set its type, NPC, hazard, loot, familiar, or PC. So PCs are a bit of a different beast. They'll have their character sheet that you can mess with. Um, and by default, I don't recall how the tokens function. So the first thing I will say is that tokenizer is very nice. Uh, it is a module that you can see in your settings when you manage your modules. This is where all your modules go. When they're installed, they'll be inactive. So you just have to go to all or inactive and check off the ones you want. The one that I recommend firstly is tokenizer and that just lets you add artwork to your tokens and then you can put them out there. Um, so first things first for tokens. So once they're here, then you just click and drag them out and you put them out. So I have these all set up already um, to be done with that. I'll show you how to do um, one monster right now though. So let me delete this and I'll redo it. So when you want to put a monster out on the field, there's a few things you have to do by default in this way to get it to work properly. Um, so Foundry has compendium packs and those are just like everything you could possibly want with the world in addition to macros and the game system, which is super nice. So you search up a monster, um, I'll just do a skeleton. Or no, I'll do a red dragon because that's what I had in the bank. So say I want a young red dragon. Okay, cool, here's the sheet. Okay, I'm gonna click and drag it out. It doesn't work. Well, it does actually work, um, but that takes a bit of time. So if you kind of know what monster you want beforehand, that's cool, okay? But, so you can click and drag it out and it's perfectly usable, it moves around, uh, but it has a weird face on it and I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it to my own actors tab. So you wanna click and open it and you click import and that will bring it to your own actors area. Uh, I have it here twice, that's fine. And that just means that like it's ready to use. I don't have to go back and search it up again. I'll have it here ready. And so I want to add a proper image because I don't really like this, whatever this creature is. Um, I want actual art for it. And so with tokenizer, when you have the module installed, you'll click on the face here and it'll bring up this menu. And now you want to go modify, delete the face, delete that, delete that. And then you click on this little doohickey that uploads it from your computer. So like I mentioned before, you need to have your image files in the right place. If you just have them like on your desktop or whatever, they're not stored in that tabletop like they are in Roll20. They are stored uh, on your computer in association with Foundry. So to make sure they're in the right place, you need to go to your taskbar and right click Foundry and go to browse user data and that'll open up your C drive uh, where the stuff is stored. Then you want to go to data and a assets. Well, I made, I made the folder. So it'll look like this. Um, this is default ones. Oh, this is where they're stored. Yeah, so they're stored with this. And that means that if Foundry's ever updated or the, the version has changed, which happens quite often, if they're not installed here, they will be deleted. So you need to make sure they're in installed here. So what I did is I made an assets folder and then I have everything in there. So that when I upload it through tokenizer, it'll bring me right there. And this is the folder with all the stuff from this campaign. So you can sort it by campaign if you want. Um, I'm gonna go to Red Dragon, there it is. So now it has an avatar image, which means that on the right bar or in the, in the actor area, there will be a picture. And then for the actual token, you need to do it again. I'm sure there's a way to duplicate it over. I don't know how. There probably is a way. I usually just do it manually because <laughs> I know it works. Um, and there you go. Now it has a token and a circle. So now when I click and drag it over, the artwork is there with the border and everything. So it's ready for combat. So that is how to throw in a map, how to get in. Um, 
sort of how to do a module and how to put a token on the map. And now you can uh, have a fight here with our orc versus our young red dragon. That'll be a whole other video. This is just the bare bones of how to get in. I hope that helps.